Okay, so um, these are chapter four notes. Uh, I gave a handout on this stuff, and the only part that I've um, copied over to this uh, Microsoft OneNote thing is just the top part. Um, <clears throat> so I'll go over that and then kind of derive the rest of that handout in this video in case you missed it or didn't understand it the first time. Uh, so in this, we've got a circle. It's centered at the origin, so centered at 0, 0. The radius is R. And uh, we've got this reference angle, uh, theta, here. So theta might be in degrees, might be in radians. Um, and it's in standard position. So standard position, what that means right here, is that um, when you have an angle, you measure it from a horizontal line going in the positive x direction. Usually the uh, angle is sitting on the origin. And then you rotate counterclockwise to wherever you want to end that angle. Um, and so that would be in standard position, whereas like an angle like, uh, like this, where you're talking about this angle, that's not in standard position unless you move it around so that it looks more like that instead, right here and here. So that would be standard position. Typically it's x-axis, rotate around to wherever it is you want to end your angle. Um, and so there are two sides to this. There's the initial side right here, and then there's the finishing side where you stop or terminate, and that's called the terminal side. So in this case, the terminal side intersects the circle at x, y. So that's right here at that point. Okay? So uh, that's what we have. Um, and then there's these six definitions. And I know that you learn these definitions in various ways, depending on whether or not you learn right triangle trig first or you learn unit circle trig first. But if you actually go with these six definitions right here, really these are the three most important ones then everything else comes out of it. So we've got a point x, y, we've got a radius r, we've got an angle and standard position theta, and these are the different relationships between them. Sine theta is y over r, cos theta is x over r, tan theta is y over x. And then you probably remember from algebra two, sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other, cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other, and tan and cotan are reciprocals of each other. So those are the, those are the main definitions that you need to know. Um, you already have learned that the equation of a circle is this, where h and k are the center point. Well, in this case, h and k are both zero, so it's just x squared plus y squared equals r squared right here. So then I want to do a couple of things with, with these definitions to help you out. Um, one of the things is if you needed to write x and y in terms of r's and thetas instead, right? Well, let's take our definitions that use r's, thetas, x's, and y's, and in particular, we'll take these two right here. So if I take these two, so let's start with cos theta equals x over r. If I needed x, then I can just multiply both sides by r, and I get r equals cos theta, or sorry, x equals r cos theta. And then if I do the same thing with sine theta, which is y over r, then I'm going to get r sine theta equals y. So now I can write my point x, y as r cos theta, r sine theta. Okay? Um, another thing is tan theta is y over x. So let's look at that. So this is one important conclusion right here. Another important one, if we look at tan theta equals, whoops, theta, equals y over x. Let's make up a point for this x, y up here. Um, it looks like maybe it could be like um, negative 2, positive 3, something like that. Let's just estimate. So this length right here and this length right here, this vertical length would be 3, this length would be 2, and uh, if I wrote y over x, the y coordinate's 3, the x coordinate's negative 2, so it'd be 3 over negative 2 or negative 3 halves. Uh, well, really, that's the slope of this radius right here, right? It's downhill, so it's negative 3 over 2. So another way of thinking of tan theta is that tan theta equals the slope of the terminal side 
or the terminal, in this case it's the radius, of theta. Right, I'll put the radius in parentheses there. So this is another kind of conclusion that we can look at. So as a quick example, if I said, well, let's let theta be 45 degrees, right? And I said, so what's tan 45? Tan 45 is really going to be the slope of that radius. And since it's perfectly symmetric uh, uh, between this axis and this, this axis, it's going to be 1 because it's over 1, up 1. Uh, there are other ways of getting those values, but that's that's one quick way. Another important thing that comes out of that is if I said, what's tan 90, right? So then we rotate 90 degrees up to here. Well, tan 90 would be saying, what's the slope of this thing right here? Well, the slope of it is undefined because it's a vertical line. Tan 90 is also undefined. And if you went back to y over x, right? Well, whatever radius this is, let's say the radius is 4, right? This point is 0, 4. So it'd be 4 over 0, which is undefined. So this one, undefined. Right? Okay, so that's another important conclusion. The tan theta is the slope of the terminal side of theta. Um, <clears throat> we already talked about the fact that these guys are all reciprocals. Um, and then one other thing that comes up is, what if we let the radius equal 1? Right? So if the radius is 1, I'll sketch this down here. Uh, let me just black. And then we'll have our circle here. So radius is 1. I'll draw it kind of like it was above. So this is xy. Radius is 1. This is theta. Okay, so it's really the same exact thing except shrunk down so the radius is 1. Or maybe stretched out so the radius is 1. One of the conclusions that we can come up with based off of this guy is that xy will be cos theta, since it's 1 times cos theta, and 1 times sine theta. And uh, so, again, remember, if r equals 1. And this you should have seen last year uh, in Algebra 2. That's based off of this circle centered at 0, 0 with radius 1. Well, that has a special name. That's the unit circle because the radius is one unit. So all the properties you learned about the unit circle come out of this idea when r equals 1. Okay. Um, one other thing is, what happens if we let um, theta be an acute angle? So let me, uh, let me erase some of this stuff here. X that. I'm going to copy this part here, edit, copy, and then I'll paste it down here. Whoop. Paste. Okay. So if I restrict theta so that it's an acute angle right here, theta. So that means I have to be in quadrant one. So uh, like here's part of my circle right there. And I'm going to relate x and y to each other. Okay, uh, my radius could be whatever I want here. So in the first quadrant, really pretty much any quadrant, if I make this right triangle, I've got my acute angle here, theta, and this length right here is the same as y, and this length right here is the same as x. And remember, in right triangles, if this is the angle I'm referring to, then y is my opposite side, x is my adjacent side, and r is my hypotenuse. So then if I come over here and replace y, r, and x with these terms, opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent, well, this becomes opposite over hypotenuse, and this becomes adjacent over hypotenuse, and this becomes opposite over adjacent. And these guys together make up that Sokotoa um, word thing that helps you remember uh, what sine, cosine, and tangent are. And then these guys are just their reciprocals still. So you would get hypotenuse over opposite, and hypotenuse over adjacent, and what's this one? Adjacent over opposite. But generally speaking, when I ask in class what sine theta is, what cosine theta, what tan theta is, 
I'm not asking necessarily for right triangles unless you already know you're only working with a right triangle with an a, with an acute angle right here. Instead, I'm asking for these general definitions since everything else falls right out of that. Um, let's see how long is this video getting? Okay, so I want to do one other thing here. Um, so I want to talk about not necessarily circles on a graph, just circles in general. Um, there are different ways to measure angles in a circle. So let's say this is the angle theta right here. Right? And in this case, um, it doesn't have to be standard position, just some angle in a circle, central angle. Right? So one thing is, if I measure that angle in degrees, uh, maybe I want to know well how many angle how many degrees out of the entire circle does this take up? So what percentage of the circle is taken up by my angle? Well, it'd be theta out of 360 total degrees, right? But I could also measure it in radians. So if I wanted to measure it in radians, well then I'd have theta radians, and maybe you remember that's out of two pi total radians in a circle. So these each describe a, the percentage of the circle that that angle takes up. Since it's the same percentage, they're equal. Okay. You could also talk about how long this arc is, right? So I'm going to call that arc length L. So the arc length is also a percentage of the circle. It's a percentage of the entire circle's circumference. So L would be part of the entire circle's circumference, 2 pi r. So that means, since this is also the same percentage, that's equal too. And then there's one other one. If I shade this in and call it the area of the sector, right? It's got to be a central sector too. It can't be like something that looks like this, right? That doesn't, that's not related. So if I have this central sector right here, I've got the area of the sector. Um, well, that's a percentage of the circle's total area. So that would be pi r squared. And since that's the same exact percentage, all four of these guys are equal. So depending on what you know and what you have to solve for, you might pick like, oh, I have theta degrees and I need the arc length, something like that. And if you know the radius, then you can get it. So, okay, I hope that helps. Those are the, the kind of conceptual notes for this uh, unit. And um, there's a little bit more on that notes handout, but we'll, we'll cover that when we need to. Um, in the meantime, we also did a few examples in class. I'm going to make videos for a lot of those as well. So you can check that if you missed it or needed to review it.